This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Guess I get to see it with my own eyes. Jackpot. <laughs> Devil may cry. What's going on guys, RBG here, back with another Devil May Cry related video. It seems like it's been forever since I reported anything on this franchise. I believe the last thing I covered was the rumors that DMC5 will be getting a special edition which turned out to be true. With the exception of a few things, like we never got these swimsuits for Lady and Trish or the Ladies Night mission, but we got Virgil, so that's dope. Anyways guys, before we dive balls deep into today's topic, I want to talk about something that's going to benefit your balls as well as your other male extremities. We have to talk about Manscaped. I'm usually not a fan of hitting below the waist, but I am a fan of hitting myself down there when it comes to grooming. And currently, Manscaped is the only company that dedicates their product to this. They hooked your boy up with this dope performance package, or the perfect package as they like to call it, that features a bunch of tools to keep that bush downstairs tame. One of the things I'm excited about trying out the most is the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. This bad boy comes equipped with a powerful 7000 RPM motor with a rapid charging dock, and it's waterproof so it's perfect for trimming in the shower. Above all, it's the only trimmer on the market made with advanced skin safe technology and a LED light, so you don't have to worry about cutting too close to the prairie oysters. Besides that, the perfect package also comes with other effective tools like the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. That's right, you heard me, we got deodorant for your balls. If you're gonna deodorize your armpits, you might as well give that same attention to your man downstairs. I mean, it is the smelliest part of your body. But guys, if you sign up for their peak hygiene plan, you can get all of this plus a replenishment of your favorite products and a replacement blade for your trimmer every three months through the mail. And for a limited time only, subscribers will receive not one, but two gifts which include the shared travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. You can get all of this for 20% off and free international shipping and two free gifts when you use this promo code at Manscaped.com. So get on that now, it's an awesome deal, and your balls and your body will thank you for it. But yeah guys, it's been a pretty crazy ride for Devil May Cry. We've gotten a newer version of DMC3 Special Edition for the Nintendo Switch with all the newer features such as allowing Dante to switch among all his weapons and styles just like in DMC4 and 5. There's even a mobile game based off of DMC3 called Pinnacle of Combat, but you have to register under a Chinese account since it's being released over there exclusively. So the DMC franchise is doing really good and it shows no signs of slowing down. It hasn't been reported on how many units DMC5 SC sold, but I'm pretty sure it's sold good enough. Like if you're telling me that you're gonna put Virgil in anything, your game is gonna sell exceptionally well. With that said, the future of the mainline Devil May Cry games does seem a little mired in fog, at least from a continuation standpoint. Devil May Cry 5 did a good job wrapping up the Sons of Sparta saga. Now that Dante and Virgil have pretty much chosen to fight in a never ending battle in the demon world and Nero has taken up the full responsibility of protecting mankind with his new Devil Trigger form, it doesn't seem like there's much left to tell in terms of story. And since the creative director Hideaki Asano has gone on record on how he would like to move on to other projects, many including myself have assumed that this was indeed the last installment of DMC. But it seems like Asano's son isn't quite done with the franchise. On New Year's Eve, he sent out a somewhat cryptic tweet suggesting that he may be working on a new DMC related title. Happy New Year! Did you play DMC 5 SC? If you get new hardware, play it. Until then, practice with Virgil DLC. The new project under construction in parallel is on track. It's still a long way off, but stay tuned for the announcement. And as you can see, he's on a motion capture stage with none other than Dante himself, Ruben Langdon. After seeing this, many began speculating on what Itsano and Capcom could be working on next. Since he mentioned Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition and had a photo featuring Dante's voice actor, many assumed that it could possibly be another DMC related project. I personally wouldn't mind seeing them add more DLC content to DMC5 since it's still a relatively new title. There were a lot of things left unexplained in the game that they could potentially fill in the gaps for. Like they have plenty of material to work with since the tie-in novels have pretty much gone into more detail. Everything from what led up to the events of part 5 like how Nico met up with Nero and created the Devil Breaker. And V has his own separate standalone novel detailing what went on after Virgil separated himself from his humanity and became Yorizen. Like there are so many plot lines that developers could go with to keep us occupied for a while. Another thing Itsano could possibly be working on is Dragon's Dogma 2. The first game became very popular and has gone on to spend a pretty decent anime on Netflix. And unlike Devil May Cry, which was not created by Itsano, Dragon's Dogma was. So it would make a lot of sense for him to want to work on a franchise that's essentially his baby as opposed to continuing work on something that somebody else created. I remember him revealing in an article interview that he and his team was only able to accomplish 60-70% to 70 of what they wanted to in the first game, and how he hoped to include those ideas in the sequel. 
So it's very plausible that he could be trying to fulfill those ideals for Dragon's Dogma 2. And this whole notion of him going back and completing a project has pretty much been the overall theme of Hideaka Itsuno's career. Like he's been going down this road since Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. So it's always been this thing of will he or won't he. Funny enough, he had pitched the idea of the first Dragon's Dogma game shortly before he was brought on board to work on his first DMC project, which was Devil May Cry 2. And that leads me to one of the biggest theories revolving around Isano's tweet, the possibility of him coming back to remake Devil May Cry 2, a game that everyone chooses to look over because of how bad and disjointed it feels from the other entries in the series. The story was uneventful and the gameplay and overall difficulty was just laughable compared to the first game. Like I remember being so hyped to play DMC 2 when it was first announced, I absolutely loved the overall design design aesthetic for Dante and to this very day it's still my favorite look for the character. Ironically enough, it's the only costume that hasn't been featured in any of the sequels as an unlockable. We've had the original costume from the first game in DMC3, but we have yet to see what the DMC2 costume looks like with the updated graphics. And I wouldn't be surprised if Itsano deliberately held off on including it in Devil May Cry 5 because they're secretly working on a remake for part 2. Like, we gotta remember that Itsano barely had time to stretch his legs in the development booth when he worked on DMC2. By the time he was brought on board, the game was already close to being completed. If you guys don't know the story, let me bring you up to speed. Apparently Capcom wasn't too happy with the original director's work and brought Itsano at the tail end of the development with only 4-5 to five months remaining in the development cycle to help steer the project back on course. And it really shows in the final product. For whatever reason they took away everything that was cool about Dante such as his mouthiness and cocky nature and he has little to no lines in the damn story. Like there's so much I can say about how abysmal this project was and how the company that produced it doesn't even acknowledge it. So much to the point to where they've caused so much confusion amongst the fans because of how much they've switched it around in the continuity. At one point it was said to take place after part 4 since we see Dante driving off in the demon world. It's mentioned during the Devil May Cry history segment on DMC4 and they even came up with an art book titled 3142 which is the chronological order of each installment. But fast forward to 2019 they changed it to taking place a little before Devil May Cry 4. So the fact that this particular entry has literally been shuffled around in the canon really shows that Capcom doesn't really know what they want to do with it in terms of story. There's barely been any references to it in any of the other entries and Dante's personality after it makes it seem like it's from an alternate timeline. I'd even go so far as to say DMC Devil May Cry's story fits in better with the original Devil May Cry timeline, which is saying a lot, right? DMC 2 is just that red-headed stepchild of the bunch. But despite all this glaring issues, it did have a lot of things that impressed me and if the game was fully realized, those things would have been groundbreaking. Like you can tell which components that Sano had a hand in implementing such as the shooting in different directions with Ebony and Ivory. Instead of simply pressing a button at the right time, you had to press the analog in conjunction with the attack button. And as we all know, that went on to be featured in Devil May Cry 3. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of things that Itsano lifted from DMC2 and implemented in DMC3, such as the evasion mechanics that allow you to roll to roll, dodge enemy attacks, and run along walls. And we can't forget about the Rebellion Sword, which made its debut in that game and has since gone on to be Dante's primary weapon of choice. So there's a lot of good things underneath the cracks of DMC2 that I honestly believe would have been more awesome if Itsano was brought on board at the beginning. It's almost as if he has unfinished business with this entry. Like I wouldn't be surprised if this guy rolls around in his sleep thinking about what could have been. And given how good Devil May Cry 5 looked with the RE engine and how Capcom has been going back and remaking their older game entries, there is a high probability that they could remake Devil May Cry 2. I think there's still more that Itsano can incorporate into the story to make it fit with the other installments. As a matter of fact, DMC5 scenario writer Bingo Morahashi has already gone back and expanded on that story in the DMC5 tie-in novel. He brings Lucia and Matier back, and it's revealed that Lucia has feelings for Dante which is dope because I always felt like there was something there and they could have added that to that character. Something else that's been expanded on is Virgil's sword the Yamato, because apparently demons such as the Balrog were using shards of it to increase their powers and enter into the human realm. Like reading all of this stuff just has me thinking. If it takes place before the events of DMC5, it's nothing for Itsano's team to incorporate it into a remake for DMC2. Just have it to where we actually see Dante returning to his shop after his escaping the demon world, and then do a 10 year time skip where he reunites with Lucia and they go to fight Balrog. I seriously doubt they're going to use this particular story from the graphic novel as DLC for DMC5 since Special Edition has come and went. And since the tie in novels were already exclusive to Japan, there's not that many people who even know about the stories. They aren't aware of how Dante acquired the Balrog gutless or what happened to some of the other devil arm weapons he had in the previous games. Given the fact that DMC2 was arguably the shortest and easiest entry in the series, there's no better time than now than 
to recreate it and add more to it. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this video now before I get you guys too hyped for something that may not even happen. But I'd love to know what you think about this and it's Suno's somewhat cryptic tweet down in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.